in 12, around 1240, 1250. The world changed. One empire died and another was born. The larger social army was defeated. That the large social army was defeated was also, you know, it was already unimaginable. How could this possibly happen? To the people of the Western Sudan, how could there be a change with such a great force on one side? Sundiata would go to lead several other battles which were decisive in building the Mali that would be the Mali, creating the narrative that would kind of really foreshadow where it would go. So what Sundiata did that no one had ever done before is he was able to come in and to unify the kingdoms of Ouagadougou uh, and provide a context for unifying the, all of the states around the Niger and further uh, south and further north, I'm sorry. The war at Karina, which is the war I just recounted, was a turning point for Mali. But it also showed how the history of this empire would be recounted through the acts of the emperor. So in some way, talking about Sundiata's very important role in this battle was the way to tell the story not only about Sundiata, that is to recount his acts, but also to tell a story about the origin of this nation and how, or this empire, and how it was connected to the empire which came before it, which is Ghana. I mean, we usually call it Ghana, but in that context, it's Ouagadougou, which is, would have been the, the name that people would use about it. But you know, really, this is not the story that we hear in terms of the fame of Mansa Musa. The fame of Mansa Musa, we get more so from his pilgrimage. We get more so by a recounting of his hajj, his, his making hajj, and what happened during this period when he made hajj and why it was so important. And in one way to, to look at that story or to tell that story is by what he did during his Hajj that was exceptional. First, he was an extremely wealthy individual because and had access to the resources and the wealth of Mali, which was one of the most wealthy empires at this point. So in the 14th century, the, in the 1300s, Mali was probably the most wealthy nation, kingdom, empire on the planet. And in part, this was due because of the wealth that it had in gold. So when Mansa Musa went on his um, Hajj to Mecca, he took a Saharan route. And, he, and in this route, he built a number of mosques in each of the major cities that he stopped. So he built a mosque in Gao, he built a mosque in Timbuktu, he built a mosque in Cairo, he built a mosque. So he built a number of mosques, but he also gave away so many tons of gold which he had in his entourage to people. And so in some ways what he was building was a statement about his trek, that is, you know, his, how he would make the Hajj, and he would give so much money to the poor, so much money to the various kingdoms that he encountered, but also uh, kind of his, his contribution to the legacy of what uh, education meant in this area of the world and the kind of how commerce would happen and how the people who engaged in business would be protected. 